Hey everybody, I know it's been a long time, and well, I am alive. I'd like to apologize in terms of the fact that I haven't been active with YouTube much, and I know that it's been, you know, over a year since my last video upload on YouTube. And for the active subscribers, those of you out there who have been waiting for the next upload, been felt like, you know, you've been ghosted by me. Uh, I, I'd like to again say sorry. And I feel like, you know, I may have let a lot of you down by not uploading in a long time. So yeah, I apologize for that. So the next question is, why am I suddenly breaking the silence all of a sudden? Well, uh, as all of you know, unfortunately, Dragalia Lost came to an end a few months ago. And you know, though it's been a long while, I felt like I just had to upload something. And also, I needed some time to just process everything and think about what I wanted to say before uploading this video. Especially considering the fact that this is the franchise that jump-started my online presence. So this video is going to be just sharing my thoughts on Dragalia Lost ending, why it ended, and also why I haven't been uploading, speaking of, on YouTube, and maybe some plans for the future of the channel. So even though they announced EOS way back in... I guess like March, right? This is just my opinion, but I feel like this was signaled probably at the third anniversary when that was announced that that was a sign of the beginning of the end. The reason for that is I thought the third anniversary was pretty um, very underwhelming compared to the previous anniversary announcements like especially the second one don't take my word for it let's just recap shall we i mean when we look at the second anniversary we had galazina we had the forgotten truths with Ilya mine mini 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 mo i don't know how to pronounce her name mordecai <laughs> midgard summer zero and a banger of a song. We are the lights. And not only this, everything with version 2.0. This was, uh, I think we've forgotten how huge of an update this was. Everything from the graphical changes in the 3D models, they added a sparking system. I repeat, a sparking system for summoning guaranteeing the character or dragon you want from a banner quality of life changes to for example expedite the weapon crafting and upgrading system also changes to the worm print system and the fact that you can add multiple worm prints and their affinity bonuses if you synergize things correctly uh, the buffs to all these different characters and the dragons to make them more relevant uh, more difficulties and rewards for dragon trials and agito modes new weapon class of the mana caster i mean the fact that they added this new weapon class just totally changed the possibilities. One thing I've been crying out loud for was not just the Mana Caster, to add more and more weapon classes in Dragalia. I wish they added, for example, like a, a shield weapon class or like a, uh, I don't know, a, a brawler weapon class. Wouldn't that have been cool? Anyway, I can't believe they, they didn't add more weapon classes and just as this Mana Caster weapon class did for the game, I think more and more weapon classes would have added more excitement to the overall game. There are also the new master levels for Agito, which produced six star weapons for the different weapon types. Fortnite in Dragalia! Fortnite! Could go on and on with this, and that didn't even include all the daily tenfolds, the bonus rewards, login bonuses, etc. Now let's compare all this that was announced in year two in the year three 
digest. You know, other than the usual login rewards and stuff, like Gala Zethia, Gala Bahamut. I mean, yeah, that was pretty cool, not gonna lie. And, you know, Faith Forsaken Part 1 and Part 2, I guess. Uh, Parle, who cares about this edgelord? I don't care about this scrub. More like Harla didn't know yet. There's also uh, unbinding five star dragons up to five times instead of the usual four. Well, that's pretty good, I guess, when in reality, um, lots of veteran players never really used those dragons even after this update and just sticked with, what, Galamars and other Gala Reborn dragons anyway. Omnicide? Okay, yeah, I'll give you that. It, there were so many people, as an aside, that were advised, Oh, you should save all your Omnicite! Then those same people have like five Omnicites in their storage and don't know what to do with them. Halloween Silas, Yurio, Michael, Dragon Yule Nevin, Izumo, Pia Alt. It, you know, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel if a lot of your hype has to come from upcoming five stars and seasonal alts, which takes away the surprise and suspense for the upcoming seasonal events. Again, just my opinion. Honestly, I think the one and only huge update, gameplay-wise, for 3.0, if you could even call it that, was the Kaleidoscape, which was a great mode. Uh, a roguelike mode for Dragalia. Hey, we talked about Fortnite and Dragalia. This was like Hades and Dragalia, kind of. Uh, I mean, it was actually really fun. <laughs> but in the year three digest, just rewatch it. And Kaleidoscape was pretty undersold, I think. And again, the really only huge update that was announced. So I think I've made the point very clear, actually. What is my point? This, and again, purely just my opinion, purely just speculation, the year three digest to me conveyed that they weren't willing to put as many resources into significantly improving the game like they did for version 2.0. I mean, look how tired this man Okada was when 2.0 was announced. Look at this disheveled hair. The wrinkles in his clothes, the bags under his eyes, the soulless pupils. I mean, that's a sign of a man who put in the long hours and put his heart and soul into this game. Then in year three, you don't even look as tired as a year ago. Uh, look at all that clean hair, the formal dandy attire he got going on here. Too much life going on in his eyes. I mean, <laughs> kidding aside, half kidding. I mean, there's definitely something to what I'm saying. Reaches aside, th that third digest was raising quite a bit of flags, indicating not if, but when the game was going to end. It was implying that the devs just weren't as invested in it anymore. I think Dragalia got lost, see what I did there, in terms of their direction. Like, what kind of game do you want to be? And I'm not sure that they knew the answer to that question. It seemed like they were throwing different game modes in the form of spaghetti on the wall everywhere, f figuring out to see what sticks, like the battle royale mode, the collide escape mode. So my take on what the direction they should have gone in was, I mean, far be it for me. I haven't played a lot of mobile games, but why did I think Dragalia Lost is and continues to be my favorite mobile game ever? high praise, I know. But, you know, the most fun I had was the co-op mode, where you actually had to work together with people to defeat difficult bosses. You know, granted, some of the modes, like when the HDTs, the High Dragon Trials, first released, where you and a party of three others, one from Brazil, one person all the way out there in Norway, other in Zimbabwe, y'all had to have perfect internet and move in sync, where <laughs> one false move would've killed you. Was it very difficult? Yes. Even though it was hard, it was fun. And where the community really shined was being encouraging in terms of helping scrubs like me. Failure after failure, clear these bosses. And once you did clear, oh man, it felt like you conquered a huge mountain. You conquered the whole world. Then, naturally, as characters and characters got stronger, oh, naturally, yeah, 
HDTs got easier and easier. So then what did they do as a response to that? They released a new mode in Agito. And you took on Agito using the materials you got from HDTs to form high dragon weapons. You see where I'm going here with this. What I'm trying to say is that there is a clear progression from one mode to the next. We used regular five star weapons to challenge to take on the HDTs. High dragon weapons then were used to take on Agito, then Agito weapons to take on the Sinister Dominion, I guess? Which, to me, it provided a marginal upgrade. Affinity bonuses were cool, but it's not like you didn't really need them. Only for like whales and the super MLG players out there, I guess. So I ask, why didn't they just stick with their co-op formula? And instead of providing Worm Prince with extra bonuses, why didn't they just make a Sinister Dominion weapon? See, the idea here was just give players another goal, another motivation to play the game, to get another cool shiny weapon so that we can use it to flex on other people, which we can then use to take on another boss mode, then that boss mode gives more materials to farm another weapon, then another after that, and so on. They could have just built on this over and over again and just create cycle after cycle in a formula that didn't need to end. Why deviate from what was the lifeblood of your game? So did the devs feel like they had to respond to fans who were bored with the boss battles and wanted something unique? I mean, let's not discount that possibility. There were in fact players that were losing more and more interest. They were moving on to other gotchas like I don't know, Genshin Impact or Tower of Fantasy. What other games are people playing these days? But if you ask me, who do I point the finger to? Probably Nintendo. And I might get in trouble for saying this, but I don't have any proof or any hard evidence. This is just speculation at best. But I can totally picture a scenario where, you know, they're all in this big meeting room and there are the Psy Games developers and then you, the Nintendo representatives walk in and they said, you know what, this game is boring. Come up with something different. Or maybe just there were developers that didn't care enough. Look no further than the neighbor of Fire Emblem Heroes. Fire Emblem Heroes! And that game's still to this day alive and well. Maybe this was a kind of chicken or egg thing where it was the fan base versus the developers in a competition of like who cared less more. Actually, maybe that was the issue. It, the issue was not about you out there who supported this game, supported the developers, put in your time and your money to trying to make this game better and being passionate about this. Those of you who were active members of the community on Discord, YouTube, Twitter, Reddit, all these different communities, voicing your opinions. I think the problem was that there wasn't enough of you out there. There wasn't enough of you out there passionate fans that tried to keep this game alive. If there were more of you, this game probably, maybe, would have been alive today. Look, I'll be honest and you know what, I'll raise my hand and say I was losing interest in the game too. As I said before, DL was kind of deviating from what got me hooked into the game in the first place and that was the co-op. And I guess as a result of that, the only really thing that was keeping me invested into the game was the characters and you know the new characters that release from time to time but that could only go for so long right whether it was those characters simply falling out of the meta or i just simply got bored of those characters and was just waiting for the next new character to come out eventually this got into a cycle where i was eventually getting fatigued with the game it didn't help that I encountered some toxic people on YouTube and Twitch and other places along the way, which ties into why I stopped uploading and streaming Dragalia content altogether. I mentioned before that DL was what kickstarted my whole streaming career. 
if you could even call it a career. I mean, if you looked at the beginning of my YouTube channel, just just tried all these different things, uploading Pokemon reviews and whatnot, until Dragalia Lost uh, came out with the Halloween banner, and then I tried to do some Halloween summons for Halloween Elisan. And that's where it kind of took off. You know, as a small content creator, the fact that this Halloween LSN video took off, it was like, well, I guess this is the kind of content I need to roll with. Until that is, my content kind of mainly became about that. Actually, gaming content wasn't even supposed to be my main thing. It was, I mean, it was a happy accident. And actually, for those of you who know me, uh, what I really wanted to do was skit videos and, you know, also some review videos on the side. So it then came to a point where I just, you know, stopped uploading, not just Dragalia content, but just stopped uploading altogether. Along with the uh, toxicity and the fatigue that I mentioned before, the other reason was honestly, I just didn't want to. And it didn't help that my viewership was decreasing and therefore the time and effort to edit things was kind of on a rate of diminishing returns, so to speak. I was also in the process just doing some soul searching. Like, I didn't want to be known as the guy who does gotcha pulls. Like, King David, pull guy, yeah, he's the guy that pulls for characters, yeah. <laughs> there was also that fear of like, you know, the YouTube algorithm and my subscribers, what videos they were looking for. I felt like my subscribers were just looking for gotcha videos and, you know, then got into like an unhealthy thinking cycle of like, you know, what was the point? And this is why I just focused on Twitch because for me, I think YouTube was giving me this pressure of having to edit and upload new content often. And of course, like editing and uploading, that's a time consuming process. I mean, for Twitch, it's just turn on your game, turn on OBS, that's it. And also, I was just getting tired of Dragalia. I love the game, but I felt less and less passion, less and less joy from uploading more and more content about it. It sounds strong, but pretty much got burnt out by this whole thing. And I'm sorry if that comes as a shocker or a surprise to you all. That's just honestly how I've been feeling this past year. So where does this leave us? Well, I'd hate to say this, but this means that including this video, probably no more Dracalia content in the future. But the exception is I did do a stream where I ranked all the characters from Yudin all the way to Bonforge Yudin. That will be my last Dracalia lost vid. Until the day I do I guess muster the gumption or the will to start doing the videos that I want to do. So when I do come back, maybe expect something very different to gaming content. Even considering maybe a rebranding of the channel. There will be announcement videos if necessary, so that's something that I'm gonna leave out there. Speaking of gaming content, if you still want to watch me play some games, I have been and continue to uh, doing Twitch, so you can check me out on that. Please give me a follow. And yeah, I'd like to just end this video by saying thank you. Thank you, Dragalia Lost. Uh, not only have you just jump-started my career, I, honestly, I wouldn't be here today if it not for you. I know that's a little bit of a strong thing to say, but I mean, I certainly wouldn't have made this video. I certainly wouldn't have had the wonderful people that uh, I've met along the way that have joined the YouTube comment section, that have joined my streams. And speaking of, thank you so much to the viewers out there, to the subscribers out there, to the commenters out there that, you know, no matter what I upload that you've watched my videos, that you gave that like, you gave that comment, and yeah, the overall, I know that I mentioned that there were some toxic people. Actually, generally, I've been fortunate to encounter just very positive people along the way and very encouraging people along the way. And uh, just thank you so much. And, you know, this isn't.
goodbye <laughs> by any means. I hope to see you guys on some other videos that I upload or, or Twitch or whatever it is. We also have Discord up and running so you can catch me on that and interact with not just me but other cool people that I've mentioned in that community. Yeah, I just cannot say thank you enough. I hope that you'll be excited for the different direction that this channel is going to take and I just hope that you can join me in this exciting new journey together. I've just been blessed by all of you. And this is King David saying, stay safe, stay royal, Mords, and see you on the next time. Bye-bye.